feasible but it only depends upon your motivation how much you are uh, how much work you are putting and it's kind of off from your academics as well so you will have to kind of manage that so that is the thing okay otherwise uh, there is no restriction there uh, is that clear yes sir okay so uh, let's just start uh, our discussion so we will be starting with signal and system and i will be um, basically going on points only to the point only so signals and systems okay and we have already seen the syllabus so i'm not going into syllabus i will just be starting from the basics only so first we have to understand what a signal is okay and i'm not going into you know much detail but i have to kind of uh, put this so signal is a word from the english language and it is used both as a verb and as a noun okay so when it is noun when it is used as a noun it basically means that uh, its patterns okay some sort of patterns or some sort of variation okay uh, for example I mean, signal is a word that is quite familiar with us we kind of keep using this in our day to day life so it's not that difficult to understand the only thing is that we have to understand uh, why it is uh, the way we are going to define it okay in mathematically why it is like that so it's pattern variations of some sort and these patterns and variations are mathematically whenever you see patterns and variation and things like that they are generally depend uh, you know described as a function only okay and when it is verb it basically means carrying some information or transferring some information okay carrying information and you can see all the examples uh, i mean let me just give you some example of the signal uh, let's say you have a physiology signal like electrocardiograph okay so ecg so you see that it is kind of a waveform isn't it and waveforms are represented by functions only is that clear uh, for example let's say that you see this uh, you know traffic signal red green and blue okay so you have like green and then i think yellow is there and i think you have red okay so this is basically a, um, a traffic signal and you can see that it is a pattern and you can easily represent it by you know a, um, a discrete kind of function or uh, if you want you can uh, represent it by a waveform as well okay so that is uh, uh, these these are the two examples where you see that both of them can be represented at function so signals are basically functions so when we talk about signal in this course we basically means that it is function of one or more independent variable so let me write that the definition only so signals are function of one or more independent variable variable okay so this is the definition of the signal and i hope that all of you are able to understand this is this clear to everyone most of you are in third year so it, i mean signal is pretty clear to you up till this point okay now since we have signal uh, so you see that uh, when we are representing a function of time we have two things so one is independent variable and that is t and this is one uh, what you can say this is domain domain of our signal if it is a function of time or if even if it is not a function of time generally uh, i will discuss about this and you have range or codomain you can say and codomain is a dependent variable of independent variable t so it's going to be let's say f of t okay so you have domain as well as you have your range isn't it so it's a mapping from t to ft and you already know how this mapping should be what are the condition under which it is going to be called function 
Is that clear? OK, now what this is going to assume? I mean, in what is the scope of this syllabus? What kind of function do we have to study? So here I have written function, but I should have written it a reasonable function. OK, what we mean by reasonable function is that we are not going to deal with pathological functions. OK, I mean the functions. Let's let me give you an example here. Let's say that uh, you have FT and FT is equal to one when T is rational. And it is equal to zero when T is. Irrational. There is nothing wrong with the definition of function. It's a perfectly valid function, but we are not going to be dealing with these kind of pathological. So this is not going to be called a uh, what you can say function. This is this is not going to be called a function. And why this is not going? Uh, this is not going to be called a signal. Why I will not be calling this function a signal, though I, I have written that uh, signals are function of one or more variable, independent variable. Why I have written it like this? That it is not a signal. Because it's kind of a pathological signal. You see, uh, if you go from here to here, how many rational number you have and how many rational number you have between any two points. Let's say this is one and this is two. Between any two points on the line uh, number line, how many rational numbers are there? So infinite, infinite. And how many rational numbers are there? Okay. Infinite. Infinite. So this function has more discontinuity than we can deal with. In simplest word, uh, if a function is, you know, infinitely time discontinuous, we are not going to deal with those kind of function. Is that clear? And that's why I have taken this example. OK. So we don't call these kind of pathological signal. Uh, and we don't call these pathological signal as a signal. A pathological function as a signal. Not a signal, OK. So let's say what can we do now? We have these two variables here. Uh, one is t and another is f of t and function when we are saying function we have to deal with both of them right so this is independent variable right and this here is a dependent variable okay and we will be performing operation on both of them both on independent variable as well as on independent variable. OK, so what are the operations that we will be performing on uh, independent variable? Can somebody tell me? We can shift it. We can scale it. And uh, we can invert it. So these are the operations that we perform on independent variable itself. And then you have FT that is dependent variable. And on this, uh, we can again perform this. We can multiply, we can add and things like that. OK, so these are the this is what we are more familiar with. We can integrate it, we can differentiate it and things like that. So this should be uh, much more familiar to all of you. But these are the operations that we are going to learn here for the very first or uh, you know uh, that we are going to learn here. And that is something that you may have may or may not have gone through. OK. Now let me just uh, try and attempt to classify this as well. OK. So we have T. OK, uh, let me just take a new page only. So we have T here and we have F of T here. So these are the two things that is there in the signal. And they did both of them are variable. This is uh, FT is our signal and T is uh, what you can say implicitly when we are talking about a function, we implicitly kind of acknowledge the presence of both domain as well as range, right? So we have to kind of deal with both of them. So T and FT, both of them can be continuous or what you can say they can be uh, real number. So they can be real number. OK, so both of them are real. OK, means both of them are continuous. Real number is you have infinitely many real numbers between any two point. You can't count that how many numbers are there. So they are called uncountable infinite. OK, so that's why uncountable infinite means continuous. OK, 
so this is real and this is real another thing that can be there is that uh, this is integer and this can be real similarly here you can have this t as a real and this can be integer and then you can have both of them as integer only okay so if you have a real time as well as ft is real so this kind of signal is called continuous time continuous value signal so this is your independent variable and we generally denote it by time and this is the range that we are going to call at value so this will be called continuous time time continuous value signal okay and similarly this is going to be called since now you have integer and integer a kind of discrete right you have zero then after that uh, zero to one you don't have anything in between and at one you have another thing right so this is called discrete time but continuous in value value signal similarly we have this uh, where time is continuous but this is uh, discrete so this is called again continuous time discrete value signal time and discrete value signal and similarly we have here uh, this is both of it them in are integer so both of them are discrete so it is discrete time discrete value signal okay so uh, if the value is continuous okay then we are going to call it waveform okay and if uh, this time is continuous or discrete you know time sorry if time is continuous then we are going to call it waveform and if time is discrete we are going to call it a sequence okay so this kind of signal the very first signal that you are saying seeing here we are going to call this analog signal there are multiple reason for this being called analog signal one of them is that uh, let's say that you have electrocardiogram then you kind of take this signal and after that uh, you the, the electrocardiogram you can see that it is a physiological signal right or let's say whatever i am speaking uh, is it's kind of a physical signal isn't it it is pressure versus time but when we when my you know computer is taking the, this it's representing this in it in a analogous form so both waveform are going to be the same and that's why it is called an analog 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 signal or you can call this analog waveform as well and when you have this as discrete and this as continuous so in this case what we are going to call it so analog is generally associated with the value and the waveform as i told you that we are going to call it with respect to time so this is going to be analog sequence so this is uh, sorry let me write here analog sequence and generally it is uh, simply said discrete time signal okay or uh, this third one when the time is real and this is integer then it in this case it is called generally digital waveform and here you will have digital sequence digital sequence so either we will be dealing with waveform or we will be dealing with sequence you have to understand it like this okay so either we will have function that we will be representing like x of capital uh, under square bracket n or we will have function which we, we are going to represent it x of t is this clear 
Is this clear? So this is we will be simply calling this as discrete. Signal. And this is we are going to be calling or you know discrete time signal you can say discrete time signal and this is what we are going to calling uh, we will be calling as continuous. Time. Signal. OK, and we will be dealing with both of them. Now signal kind of acts like uh, you know it's kind of a messenger. It takes your information from one point to another point. OK, so it in that sense it kind of acts acts like a uh, what you can say uh, a vessel. OK, and if you have a vessel you would like to measure its size. So there is something called uh, you know size of the signal. So let me just uh, describe that. Uh, just just a moment. OK, um, so uh, let's let me just come back to this. Am I audible now? Yes, sir, you are. Yes, OK, so now we are going to discuss something called size of a signal. OK, and I mean, what is size? Can anybody tell me about that? Uh, something which has with dimensions. Something that is related to dimension or something that tells us. I mean, size is a number, right? Most of the time, isn't it? Let's yeah. say you are. Ca yes, uh, yes, right? Sir, maybe so size is basically. Can carry. Uh, yeah, it is related to that only, but uh, it's a bit more abstract concept than that. Size of any entity is basically just a number that tells us how small or large that entity is in its own class. OK, its own class. You can't compare the volume with the, you know, some other, uh, you know, uh, area. Can you compare volume with area? No, sir. Right. Are you getting my point when we are saying that you can compare within class only? OK. So size is just a number that gives us how something is, you know, how much something is large or how much something is smaller in its own class only. OK. So uh, in that concept, signal is basically let's talk about 1D signal only. So signal is kind of a waveform. OK. Isn't it? So size signal is kind of a waveform only. So how can we, you know, uh, represent this by one number only. So one of the major can be area, isn't it? You compute the area under curve, right? But then you see that you will have sine wave and sine wave, which is which kind of exist from minus infinity to plus infinity, but it has area that is equal to zero, isn't it? Positive area is going to cancel out negative area. So another thing is that instead of taking area of this function itself, what we can take is area of mod of this function, isn't it? But mod is not a very nice function. It doesn't play nice. OK, mathematically it's a bit more. I mean, once you have uh, done mod of a function, integrating it will be dif difficult. Differentiating it will be difficult. You have to see uh, you see the mod itself is from, you know, its mod of t will be something like this, so it becomes discontinuous. It introduces discontinuity in the uh, you know function itself. 
so because of that we would not mathematician don't like to take this okay so what they have arrived at is this okay so given a signal uh, you can measure uh, what is called as you know square of this signal x square t and if it is a mod signal you can what you can say area of x square t and if it is a complex signal you can compute comp uh, you know compute area of mod of xt whole square okay if it is a complex so otherwise these for a real signal both of these quantity are going to be the same but for a complex signal they are going to be different different okay so this is the definition that we are going to take and we will call this as signal energy okay so signal energy is one of the major of uh, what you can say size of the signal how relatively small or large a particular signal is okay and how it is defined for a continuous time signal it is defined as minus infinity to infinity so let me just write this e of uh, xt and we will def be defining this and let me call this infinity for reason that you will come to understand very uh, quickly uh, let me call this e infinity subscript infinity xt and this is energy of the signal for all time and this is defined as mod of xt whole square dt okay and why i am saying this because i would like to compute this quantity e of t for let's say if signal is in finite duration so i would like to compute et which is for time duration t okay so let me just define it minus t by 2 to t by 2 and mod of xt whole square dt and e infinity of xt or e et of let me call this xt and e infinity of x of t is defined like this that limit t tends to infinity what you will be having et of xt okay so if a signal is in finite duration we will like to compute it like this and this is what you can say time bound energy of the signal okay so this is time bound energy okay and this is the com complete energy of the signal now as i told you that there are going to be signals for which signal energy will not be defined or maybe it's simply equal to infinity for example sine wave if you compute its mod or if you just square this and if you try to compute the area then it will be infinity isn't it so if it is infinity you can't compare to infinites isn't it so for that reason uh, we will discuss another measure of the signal and uh, let me just highlight the signal energy here so we will compute another major of signal size uh, okay uh, i forgot about discrete time signal so if you have a discrete time signal instead of integration what we will generally be computing is this quantity so e infinity of a discrete time signal or let me just first introduce et of discrete time signal so et of a discrete time signal let me call this x of n or we generally call this e 2n plus 1 we call this e 2n plus 1 so it is 2 for 2n for plus 1 samples and this quantity will be equal to summation minus n 2n okay you have x of n discrete time signal it's mod and then we will be squaring and it summing it so you can see from minus n to n you have actually n 2n plus 1 samples isn't it where n is an integer and this capital n is also an integer so how many samples you will be having there you will be having 2n plus 1 sample and that's why we are, i'm calling this 2n plus 1 uh, sample energy of the signal xn and this is going to be equal to e infinity so e infinity of uh, this signal x of n will be defined by taking the limit to infinity so limit n tends to infinity e of 2n plus 1 of this signal x of n okay so i hope that this is very very clear 
okay now let's see some example of uh, signal energy so generally signals which are time limited which are time bound are going to be energy signal okay so signals which are uh, even they exist from minus infinity to infinity in finite duration signal that can also be energy signal under certain situation but we will see uh, uh, them later let's just discuss this uh, um, energy of some very basic example so what i would like to do is i would like to in continuous time i will be like to do this thing uh, that uh, okay let me introduce three waveforms which are extremely important so the first waveform is rectangle itself okay let me just try this Slightly. Okay, you have a rectangle which is defined between, let's say, uh, T naught, and then from T naught plus T. Okay, so its its duration is T, right? Its duration is T, and it is zero after that, and its value here is A. Okay. Now another waveform that I would like to define is, uh, you know, half period of uh, fun, of sine signal. So it is sine. Okay. Uh, one of the you know half period of the sine. Okay. So again, its duration I would again like to define it between t naught and t naught plus t. And the third signal that I would like to take is triangular signal. It doesn't have to be symmetric, so I'm not going to make this symmetric. Okay, it's, you can see that this is not very symmetric signal. Okay, so you have here T naught, and then you have T naught plus T. So these are the fundamental. Okay, I have made this height a bit smaller, isn't it? So it should be from here to let's say here, and then let me quickly make this zero. So this is T naught and between T naught plus T. And again, its value is A. So what will be the area of these signals? So these are the things that you should remember. Okay, I most of the students who are doing, um, you know, who are preparing for gate kind of remember these. These are the waveform that is going to, that you are going to encounter so often. So uh, we simply want to remember these things. Okay, and we will calculate that as well. So what will be the area of this signal? Can you tell me? Of rectangle. So A T. A times T. Very good. What will be the area of this uh, sine wave? And what is the area of triangle? So area is A T for this. Okay. And how much area is this? ट्रेंगल का कितना होगा सॉरी ए टी लिखा है ओके ट्रेंगल का कितना होगा एरिया कैन एनी बडी टेल मी हाउ मच एरिया विल बी इन द ट्रेंगल इट्स हाइट बेस इनटू हाइट हाफ इनटू बेस इनटू हाइट बेस इनटू हाइट सो बेस इज टी एंड हाइट इज ए इजंट इट यस सर सो दिस विल हाफ ए टी व्हाट विल बी द एरिया ऑफ साइन so one thing we can all be uh, kind of agree upon is that this uh, sine wave half uh, you know half wave of uh, sine wave is kind of between these two isn't it its area should be between uh, this rectangle and this it should be less than rectangle but greater than this triangle isn't it and how much that is 0.7 Okay, so I would like to write this at divided by pi by two. You see that here you have at divided by one, basically at at divided by two, and pi by two is less than two, isn't it? Three point one four divided by two is like one point five something or six something, isn't it? So it is between that. So this is the area. Okay, and uh, I mean you can verify it if you want. Uh, if you want me to do it i will do this okay but you can take my word for this because we will have to deal with much bigger issue and you can verify that 
uh, a sine wave with this height and this much width is going to have, you know, it, this is what you can say the pulse. So uh, how we can define it? It's half period is T, isn't it? So full period is going to be 2T. So T uh, naught will be equal to 2T. So what is going to be omega naught? 2 pi by T naught, isn't it? So what is going to be omega naught? 2 pi by T naught. So this is going to be pi by T, isn't it? This is going to be its omega naught. And I can define this sine wave by this. Let me, I'm just doing rough uh, so you can see. So I will be defining this a sine omega naught t, right? And this is going to be basically your a sine pi by t and t, isn't it? And we are integrating and we are finding out area of half cycle, right? So this signal sign is going to start from here. It will come down zero and this again go on and on and on forever. So let's say this is zero and this is t, isn't it? And we are trying to compute it between that. T naught I have taken here as zero. So this is A, this is the waveform and we have to find its area between zero to t. So this is zero to t. You will have A sine phi by t, uh, okay, t and then dt, isn't it? So what is the integration of sine? Can somebody tell me? It's minus cos, isn't it? Yes, sir. Minus cos pi by t into t. Okay, and here what you will be having? You will divide it by pi by t evenly, isn't it? Pi by t, right? So what you have is, again, we will be putting limit 0 to capital T. Okay, so at 0, uh, you can see that uh, I'm going to write this 0 part first. So uh, let me take this common now. So let me take this these thing common. So a t divided by pi and this is what I have taken as common. And what I will be having here is cos. When I will put t, what I will have be having cos of pi, right? And minus cos of zero. Cos of pi is minus one, cos of zero is one. So minus one and minus one, isn't it? So it will be minus two. So what I will be getting? minus a t by pi into minus 2 that is equal to a t divided by pi by 2 right sabko samajh mein aa gaya ye kaise nikalte hain yes sir yes sir yes sir okay and you can do this you, you must have done it uh, quite a few times i'm just going to uh, summarize there actually that is uh, that has to be my summary so i'm just going to delete this quickly i mean it's something that you can easily do i just wanted to be sure and that's why i have written it like this okay so don't worry i'm not uh, you know kind of guessing the your abilities i'm just wanted to be sure that you agree with me okay if you are not since you're not i'm not giving you time to calculate these things okay now let's talk talk about its energy and i will just give you these value okay so you can verify that if I'm trying to find out its energy, this will be a square and it's going to be constant only, isn't it? So a square integrating between 0 to t to t naught, a square is going to be outside and you will have uh, one only integrating it, it will become make it t and if you put that, it will come out to be a square by t, a square t. If you do that square this and you will find out that it is going to be a square t divided by 3. Similarly, if you do this, you will be getting this a square t divided by 2. Uh, I call this 1, 2, 3 formula, OK? In rectangle, I will be dividing a square t divided by 1. In sine wave, I will be dividing it by 2. And in triangular, I will be dividing it by 3, OK? So is this clear to everyone? Energy comes, I mean, you can do and you can do this as a practice. But if you remember these shortcuts, it becomes much easier to calculate these things. OK, so you can easily uh, do this. OK. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. OK, yes. so this is energy of these three pulses and most of the signal that you will see in your life or in this signal and system or, uh, you know, in electrical engineering are made of these three pulses only. OK, most of the you know, signals that you will see are kind of related to these three pulses. So if you have remembered these formula, you will be easily able to compute their energy and power. OK, we will see that again 
uh, but for now we will just move on from here. OK. So is this clear to all of you? OK, uh, so next uh, thing that. I will be doing is uh, OK, let's see some example of calculating energy and power and then we will move on from there. OK. So um, let's take uh, this signal for example, OK? Uh, OK. So I'm going to define a signal X of T. I haven't uh, discussed many of thing, but it's OK. Let me define a signal X T, which is I will be drawing its waveform. OK. So this is. A signal. Which is like this. So it is from minus one. Let's say this value is one and this value is two. Okay, this is the waveform that is given and waveform R signals, right? A function of times here. Let's say this is T and this is our X of T. So I will be putting X of T up here. What is going to be its energy? Can anybody tell me? Calculate and give me the value. So three by two. It's going to be three by two. Uh, does everybody agree? So to find out energy of this XT, you have infinity of XT. Verify by three. Uh, let's see. I'm computing it now. It's from definition. It should be minus infinity to infinity, isn't it? And then mod of XT or uh, you know, since it's a real signal, I don't really have to take mod. I can directly write X square of T. And DT right now this signal exists from minus one to two. So this signal, if I have to write this in this form, this is equal to zero from minus infinity to let's say t between less than minus one, isn't it? And in that range it is domain it is zero and then between t is equal to minus one to zero, it is equal to what? One, isn't it? And after that it's a straight line, isn't it? From t between let's say zero to two, it is a straight line and what is what will be the equation of that straight line? minus half t plus one, isn't it? And after that it is again zero. So between t is equal to two to infinity, it is again zero, right? So if you do this uh, from minus infinity, I can break this uh, you know, integration in parts. So this is going to be minus infinity to uh, minus one and this is going to be zero square dt. I'm just trying to be you know uh, thorough here. And then from minus one to zero, it is going to be one square, right? DT. And between, uh, let's say, one to two, sorry, zero to two, it's going to be minus T by two plus one whole square DT. And after that, it's again from two to infinity, it's again going to be zero square DT, isn't it? This is what we will be having. So you can clearly see that this first part is zero. This part is one. So this is if you integrate one dt, what you are you will be having t. You are putting minus one and zero. And in this part, what you will be having? Minus t by two plus one whole square divided by minus of half, right? So minus of half. And I will be putting here zero and two. And in thus this third part is again, this fourth part is again going to be zero, isn't it? 
do we agree on this that zero integrated between two to infinity will be equal to zero and zero integrated between minus infinity to minus one will be equal to zero do you all agree yes okay so uh, let me just try to find this out so th this is zero so let me just drop that what this is going to be t when you put zero and minus one so this is going to be one only isn't it right how much this is going to be yes, So shouldn't that integration be uh, minus t square by 4 plus? So because it's a complex function, we can't directly. Why Why not? Why can't I do that? Sorry, sir. My bad. Sorry. I mean, uh, you want me to, uh, what you can say, break this square and then after that integrate? No, sir. My bad. I, I assumed it to be wrong. Okay. I, 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 I don't want to do that. I mean, that's going to take up my time, isn't it? And it's still going to be the same thing. So what this value is going to be when I put zero here. And when I put two here, when you put two here, it's going to be zero, isn't it? Right. So zero and let me take minus half here. So let me just. Write this here as a plus and then I will be taking here. So this is minus two times minus half as two and zero and when you put zero how much this is going to be one isn't it it's going to be one there isn't it and then it, after that it's zero do we agree this is the value that we will be getting if we put two here what you will be getting two divided by two so much zero he square so that is zero when you put Sir, zero here what when we put the zero, we should get a two. So, uh, sorry, sorry. When I integrated this square, uh, this is a square, right? Sorry, 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 sorry. It's my bad, my bad. It's it's going to be cube, isn't it? Divided by three times this. Sorry, sorry, I made a mistake there. Okay, let me do this again here. So the first part is one that's clear. And what is this going to be? Now we are doing this cube. So this is let me take this minus two divided by three here. And what I will be getting here zero. And then after that. It will be. Minus of one, isn't it? When you put zero. Right. So what you got is one plus two by three. And this will be equal to. 3 plus 2, 5 by 3, right? So this is the answer that I got and you can see that I have arrived at this answer very, very in a very uh, jada time, laga mujhe, right? And I could have arrived this answer very quickly. Let me just do that now. I will be copying this and I will be showing you how I will be doing that. Okay, so let me just control C. And let me paste this here control V. Okay, let me make this in red as well. OK. Now. Uh, let me just define from this part to this part. I mean before for all other part, it's zero. So their energy is going to be zero. We know that and yaha se yaha tak mujhe define karne do isko FT ke term mein aur yaha se yaha tak I will be assuming this as this is a different kind of waveform. So I will be assuming this GT. So XT here is basically FT. Plus GT, isn't it? So when you X square T, we have to find out X square T, isn't it? So it will be F square T. Plus G square T. Plus two times FT. Into GT, isn't it? So energy of this is basically calculating of area of this, isn't it? Is this clear? No, yes, what is sir. two times FT yes, into GT? What is two times FT into GT? This part can somebody tell me? This part here. They are not overlapping, isn't it? So when FT is non zero, GT is zero. When GT is non zero, FT is zero, isn't it? Can you see this? That these two waveforms are not overlapping. 
this is one waveform and you have another waveform. Let me just draw it somewhere else, which is a different time period, isn't it? So when you multiply these two, you are doing point wise multiplication. So when this is non zero, this part is zero. Yes, sir. The term should be zero. So this term should be zero, right? So very good. So this term should be zero. So we have to basically when we are finding out energy of this signal, we are basically finding out energy of these two signal, isn't it? So what will be the energy of this rectangle passed? Just focus on that and remember what it was a square t divided by one, isn't it? So what that is going to be? Is part ka energy? Let me just do this in colors. So for this part, what will be the energy? It is one square times one divided by one. Right? A square is A is one only. So one square times one divided by one. Right? What will be energy of this signal? It's triangle. So it is A square T divided by three. So let me do this color. So this is going to be what? One into one square by three. A square matlab one square times T. T is two and divided by three. So this part you got as one and from this part you got. Two by three. And your result is addition of this. What that is going to be? Three plus two, five by three. And this is the same answer that we got here, isn't it? And you got here in you know very fast manner. Right? So if you just know these two kind of waveform, up your basic actually char waveform hote. So I have discussed only two of them. I will discuss another one of them. So if you just remember these shortcuts here that I mentioned, that energy of this uh, particular uh, waveform for rectangle it is a square t, for uh, this it is a square t by two and a square t by three, and then area as well. Then you don't really have to do any integration even. You will always be able to get uh, you know. Energy and power very quickly, but you have to be very careful because this two times FT into GT term may and may not be always zero. Okay, is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so let me just give you another problem, and we will see that their FT and GT is not zero. Okay, so let me just give you a signal XT which is defined like this. Okay, so it's let's say it is a rectangle. And then after that, it's a triangle here from here. And then after that, it's again a rectangle. And let's make this minus three and this point as minus one. This is one and this is again three. Let's say that this value here is two and this value here is one. Is it visible to everyone? Or should I make it a bit larger? Let me make it. Okay, let me make it a bit larger in case some of you have difficulties. Okay, so this is the signal. And this is the waveform that is given. Now compute it using the you know thorough method, and after that using this method. Or do you want my help defining this signal in like uh, I did up there, here like this? Do you want do you want my help doing this, or do you will be able to do that easily? So that I. I would like to call that as functional form and this is waveform of the signal. OK, so the waveform I will be writing like this. And if I have to write this in functional form, then it will be like this. That XT is zero. Between T is equal to minus infinity to minus three. So is it answer 20 by three? Uh, I mean, I have just given you the question. I don't know what is the answer going to be. OK, I will have to compute that. And it's going to be equal to one. 
between minus three to minus one and between between minus one to zero it is equal to how much this is going to be equal to t plus two isn't it and between t is equal to zero to one it's going to be minus t plus two right and after that it's again going to be equal to one between one to three and after that it's going to be zero between three to infinity so this is what i would like to call as functional form and if you do the integration here uh, find out energy e infinity of this xt then uh, we already have seen that from minus infinity to minus 3 that term will be 0 and from 3 to infinity that term is also going to be 0 so i'm not going to write that i will just be writing this formula here and after that i will move on okay so you can see that uh, this will be equal to minus 3 to minus 1 you will have 1 square dt and then from minus 1 to uh, 0 it's going to be t plus 2 whole square dt and then from 0 to 1 it's going to be minus t plus 2 uh, whole square dt and from 1 to 3 it's going to be again 1 square dt so this first part will i mean i'm just directly going to write this this is going to be 2 isn't it and this second part what this is going to be this is t plus 2 whole cube divided by 3 isn't it and you will be putting minus 1 and 0 and then after that you will be having minus t plus 2 whole cube and divided by 3 and you will be putting here from 0 and 1 okay and this part is going to be again equal to 2 sorry this is minus 1 here as well so i will be dropping this as well isn't it okay so i keep on making these silly mistakes okay so is this clear to everyone i mean these two are very simple integrations so I, that's why i have written it too i didn't want to write them okay is this clear yes so this sir. will be 4 yes, plus sir. and let me just compute this when you put 0 what this is going to be let me take 1 by 3 common here and when you put 0 what you will be getting 2 cube isn't it so that will be 8 right and you put minus 1 what that is going to be 1 cube so that is 1 and here what you will be getting when you put one so let me take uh, minus one by three common here and what you will be getting when you put one here what you will be getting so one one and when you put zero what you will be getting minus eight. eight right minus of it isn't it so minus minus plus so this is going to be again minus seven so i will be doing that in this place here so 4 plus 8 by 3 and this is sorry uh, 7 by 3 this is going to be 7 by 3 and this is again going to be equal to 7 by 3 only isn't it so how much this is going to be you can compute so 4 plus 14 by 3 and this is 12 26 by 3 isn't it yes sir okay now let me do the same problem uh, but using uh, what you can say the shortcut method that we have just devised okay and let's see whether we are able to do that quickly or not so let me just copy this and paste it here and let me just try to do this so i will be writing this as sum of two functions and one of the function is like this 
it is basically a rectangle between let's say minus 3 to 3 okay okay so this is minus 3 to 3 rectangle and between i will be second function that i will be taking is equal to let's say so i'm not drawing to the scale okay so it is between minus one and one and here the value is again equal to one and here the value is again equal to one right so you can see from minus three to minus one it's going to be rectangle and after that it's going to be triangle there is this clear do you all agree let yes, me call sir. this ft and let me call this gt and when we do this x square t here what this is going to be f square t plus g square t plus two times ft into gt now in this case ft and gt are overlapping in the previous case ft and gt was not overlapping right here ft and gt are overlapping so if you multiply them what is the resultant is going to be if you multiply ft times gt what that is going to be can somebody tell me so i'm just going to draw this uh, let me write this like this make this in different color and i will be doing this mathematics here okay uh, red green lender so i will be plotting this ft times gt and actually i'm plotting it two times ft into gt right so what will be ft times gt you see that gt if you multiply this with ft which is essentially one between minus three to three you will get the same thing isn't it but it will result in zero from here to here it's going to become zero because you are multiplying one with zero and after this you are again multiplying one with zero isn't it so it's going to retain its shape right so it will be from minus one to one only but now you have multiplied with the two as well so this highest value will be equal to what two is this clear to everyone do we all agree on this or not yes sir yes sir Okay. Can you repeat this one? Uh, uh, how I have uh, come with the two FTGT waveform like this, right? Yes, sir. So you see that this FT is one equal to one between minus three and three, and otherwise it is zero. So after this three, it is zero. Bit before three, it is zero. Now we are multiplying this FT with GT. So it's point-wise multiplication, isn't it? So from minus three to minus one, you are multiplying GT is zero, right? And FT is equal to one between that interval, right? So zero times one will be equal to what? Zero only, so you got zero from here to here. Okay, let me do this in red. Here it is zero, here it is one, but you multiply zero with one. Let yahan se yahan tak karne do mujhe. Okay, so ye one tha. वन को आपने जीरो से मल्टीप्लाई किया कितना मिलेगा आपको जीरो इज दिस क्लियर नाउ दिस इज सम फंक्शन और बेसिकली ए लाइन ओके एंड यू आर मल्टीप्लाइंग दिस विद वन सो वन से मल्टीप्लाई करने से कोई चीज चेंज होता है नहीं राइट बट आफ्टर दैट यू आर मल्टीप्लाइंग दिस विद टू वनली सो एवरी वैल्यू विल बी इंक्रीज बाई टू सो यहां पर जो मैक्सिम वन मिल रहा है दैट बिकम्स टू नाउ Okay, similarly in this case you will be getting line, and after that it is going to be zero. Okay, because here it is one, but here again it is zero. Okay, so is this clear to? Uh, did I solve your doubt, or you will yeah. have to maybe yes, think sir, about it. it? Okay. No, sir, got it. Thank you. Uh, okay, okay, no problem, no problem. That's my job. Don't worry about that. Now, to in order to calculate it, I mean. I'm doing this methodologically, but once you understand this concept, you don't really have to draw these all these things. Okay? Can you get that? Are you getting that? Yes, sir. Okay. So, computing energy of x square t is basically computing energy of f t, computing energy of g t, and finding out this area. So, what is going to be f t energy? कितना होगा? This is basically a square six. t means one square times six divided by one. So this is going to be six. What is GT? This is a square t divided by three, isn't it? So one square into two, right? And divided by three. So this will be equal to two by three. 
am I clear? And what this part is going to be equal to? Can anybody tell me? Uh, two square into two by three. Two square into two by three. So it is eight by three. Sorry, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. It is minus one to one, isn't it? So, so yeah. राइट Yes, sir. Answer will be two. So it is going to be two only. So what I am adding? Let me just add it here. So I will be adding six plus two by three plus two. How much that is going to be? Twenty-six by three. Twenty-six by three. Is this the answer that we got in the first case? Yes, sir. We got the same answer in both of these cases. Okay. So that's why I wrote it up there. Okay. So that we can compare this. so did you get the method and utilization of this method okay how can you quickly do these integration and once after certain times if you do solve certain problems like uh, 15 20 problems over that it becomes kind of easy you kind of see the function and you know what is the its energy in like in a uh, in a seconds or so like 20 30 seconds you will be able to uh, it may take you longer to sing happy birthday for your friends then to compute energy and power if you follow these methods okay is that clear excuse me ah uh, yes yes so could you please, please explain the two ftgt sir like how is it the area of the triangle okay maine iska area kyun nikala iska energy nikala aur iska area kyun nikala ye bol rahe kya yes sir okay let me just show you that so what we are computing here is minus infinity to infinity this so this will be extended automatically to this and this is going to be minus infinity to this and this is again what we are computing is minus infinity to infinity so you see that what we are doing here is computing energy of ft and gt and what we are computing here for 2 ft gt simply area are you getting my point Uh, let me just uh, do this in a fair page okay that may be uh, i do not write very clearly so let me just add a page and what we are computing is minus infinity to infinity x square t dt right this is the term that we are computing this is energy of xt and we have defined xt as gt plus uh, you know uh, gt plus ht right gt ht ka ft plus gt right so this will be f square t dt plus you will have another integration minus infinity to infinity g square t dt and you will have third integration that is minus infinity to infinity 2 ft gt dt tell me what we are doing here so this you can see is energy this is again energy but this here is area isn't it this is area ye kya hai aapka area hi mil raha hai yahan pe na this is area of 2 ft gt this one here is a, you know energy uh, of ft is that clear okay yes sir and this is again you are calculating is energy of gt and i mean actually you are calculating area of f square t area of g square t but area of f square t is energy of ft area of g square t is energy of gt and here you are calculating just area of ft gt 
you are not squaring this, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's why we calculated energy, not area. Yes, sir. Got we, okay, 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 very good. No problem. Let me save it. Sometimes I, okay. So save new again. Okay, that's okay. So I hope that it is clear to you. Let me just introduce one more problem, and then we will see. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Ah, uh, yes, tell me. Sir, uh, can you take an example where uh, f of x, uh, uh, it, f of x is not one because uh, it will change the shape of g of x too, sir. It will well. Uh, if it is complicated problems like that, then you don't use this shortcut. Okay. Yes, sir. As I told you before, that most of the signals that you see in electrical engineering. Are going to be you know composed of these three waveforms only: triangular, rectangular, and sine. Okay, and when you have complicated things, you simply don't use this method. Is this clear to all of you? And most of the signal that you will be facing are composed of these three signals only. and maybe uh, there is exponential as well okay you don't encounter many different time of type of waveform you know complicated waveforms and when you have some complicated waveform you don't use the shortcuts method go by the you know definitions only that is minus infinity to infinity mod of xt whole square dt okay yes sir yes okay but ab ab dekhenge ki signal सिस्टम में या इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग में ज्यादातर सिग्नल जो है मोस्ट ऑफ द सिग्नल्स आर मेड ऑफ कंपोज्ड ऑफ दीज बेसिक वेव फॉर्म्स दैट इज दैट आई हैव गिवन ऑलरेडी हियर रेक्टेंगल एंड साइन पल्स एंड देन यू हैव ट्रायंगल एंड देन देयर इज वन मोर हियर लेट मी जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस इट आई मीन आई थिंक इट्स टाइम टू डू दैट ओके वी विल बी डिफाइनिंग दिस सिग्नल लेटर ऑन आई विल जस्ट बी यूजिंग दिस हियर सो दिस सिग्नल इज exponentially decaying signal after zero and before zero zero to all the way up to infinity it's going and before zero it's zero okay and this is e to the power let me call this e to the power minus 80 okay so this signal is zero for t less than zero and equal to e to the power minus 80 for between zero to t where e a is a positive constant so a can be like 2 3 something like that okay So, what will be the area of this? Sir, log of t. Sorry, one upon a. What will be energy of this signal? That is going to be one upon two a. You can verify it. So, let me just give this problem only now, so that we can verify that as well. Whatever we have written there. So, that is the third signal that you will be encountering quite often. so we have this function xt which is equal to 0 and after that is e to the power minus 80 this is our xt so xt let me define it in functional form as well to clarify any doubt is equal to 0 for t less than 0 and it is equal to e to the power minus 80 for t greater than 0 here a is a positive constant a positive number you get constant is just a number right is that clear now can you tell me what will be the area of this find out area of this area of this xt and once you compute area then find out energy of xt can you I, i have already done that right i have written the answer can you just do this on your own and verify to me whether i am i have written correctly or not
So in terms of energy, uh, I'm getting one more factor, like uh, the answer comes out as 1 upon 2a bracket 1 minus e to the power minus 2a t. Okay, uh, what you didn't get my... Uh, function ko sahi se Function minus infinity se 0 tak kya hai, 0, and then 0 to infinity tak hai hai. It's an infinite duration series. I've drawn it like this. After that, it becomes... Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's uh, going to continue. So you don't put it like 0 to t kiya hai apne, right? Yes, you sir. Don't do it. It's going all the way up to infinity. Yes, sir. Then energy is 1 upon 2. Okay. Uh, so let me, can I solve this now? Should I solve it? Okay. Uh, so let me just find out the area yes, of... Yes x of t yeah. so that is going to be i mean from minus infinity to zero it's going to be zero dt and from zero to infinity it's going to be e to the power minus a t dt right so this part will be zero and this second part will be equal to e to the power minus a t divided by minus a and i will be putting here zero and infinity okay so let me just put zero first and since we have minus i mean that part is going to so let me take one by a common here and since minus of zero so this is going to be one and then we have limit t tends to infinity and we have e to the power minus a t okay how much this second term is going to be zero? when i infinity put kiya to kitna hoga e to the power minus infinity hoga yahan pe a is a positive constant right Yes, sir. So, so this yes. term will be equal to what? Zero. Zero. Zero, right? Zero. So this term zero. is going to be equal to, it will be equal to zero. Right? So what we have is one upon a. Okay. And then after that, we have energy. We have to compute energy. So E infinity of X of T. So I will be writing that from minus infinity to zero. We are squaring zero square dt. And then from zero to infinity, I will be squaring e to the power minus a t square dt. So what we got is e to the power minus 2 a t, right? Divided by minus 2 a and this part is zero. And we are putting limit zero to infinity. So in the similar way, it will be 1 upon 2a and then 1 minus 0, isn't it? So it's going to be 1 upon 2a only. Okay. And this is very simple, so you can kind of remember this. It's one of the easiest integration that you can get. Okay. So we don't really have uh, in signal and system and even in whole electrical engineering, all that. We don't really have complicated integration and differentiation problem. But you have to kind of know how to do that okay that will be much easier <clears throat> is that clear to everyone yes sir yes sir okay, let, let me give yes, you sir. another problem that is composed of uh, these three pulses so we have a function xt which is like this let me draw this So it's like rectangle. And after that, it is exponentially decaying signal all the way up to infinity. Okay, so I'm, let me just draw this a bit more. Okay, so here you have e to the power minus 2t. And here this value is or two times e to the power minus 2t and here, uh, let me make this 3t, okay? And here this value is equal to 2. So this xt is like this. Let me just write this in functional form. And this value is, let's say, minus 3, okay? So it is equal to 0 for t between minus infinity and minus 3. And then after that, it is equal to 2 between minus 3 all the way up to 0 and after that it is equal to 2e to the power minus 3t for t is equal to 0 to infinity 
Uh, okay, is the function clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Sir, we have to find the energy, right? Uh, yes, energy. Yes, sir. Uh, is it 73 by 6? Uh, we will have to see that. OK, uh, so let me do this with a uh, shortcut only. OK, so you can see I can assume this part. Let me just make this in green. Sorry, sorry, blue. And then I will have second part in green here. I don't know if I will be able to exactly draw on the top of that, but let's hope that oh, sorry. OK, let's assume that it's kind of same. OK, so this part, let me assume that GT. This part, let me assume at FT. Now FT and GT doesn't overlap. So multiplication part will already be equal to zero, right? To FT GT, isn't it? So you basically energy of this means energy of this plus energy of this. Why? Because area part that comes by multiplying these two, since they are not overlapping, isn't it? Are you getting my point? So that part yes, will be equal to zero. Yeah. So what this is going to be? This is a square means four times three divided by one, right? This is the first part. And how much this second part is going to be? So uh, again, in on the top of that, let me just modify that definition here slightly to use it. So here it is a. E at the let me introduce capital A here. So it will start from capital A. Then it is going to be A by small a and here it is going to be A square by 2A. OK, so if I use that formula here, what I will be getting? Kya milega 4 A square means 4. Or what is 2A means 2 times 3, isn't it? 6. So what that is going to be 12 plus 2 by 3 here, right? So it will be 38 by 3. Is this the answer that you are getting? Yes. OK. Very good then. Uh, you can do it by regular, you know, by integrating as well. It's not that difficult. You see, 
we are integrating this part. So this part will be basically simple. And this part is also going to be very simple. You can easily do that. OK. So with this, I would like to conclude this session and uh, uh, maybe day after tomorrow uh, we will meet and uh, I will be giving you some simple questions based on the topics that we have discussed here as an assignment in the you know uh, in WhatsApp group and maybe in the team and that is something that you can do on your own practice that as many times as you can. I will be giving you question as well as their answers so you can verify that as well. Uh, and you solve all those problems before coming to the next lecture. So otherwise it's once we will start in advanced topic, it will become very, very difficult for you to follow on if you're not a regular. OK. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. OK, so we have introduced just a very small topic of calculating the energy of continuous time signals only. OK, in the next session we will be going a bit faster, but uh, since we have quite a second year. Uh, yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, just a doubt uh, about uh, about the gate examination form. So it is uh, the last date is 24th. Na? Um, last date is 24th. I, I don't I don't know. I will have to see. I mean, you can quickly do the gate search here. Let me just do that. OK, let me just see gate exam, right? Gate IIT KGP is conducting. I mean, otherwise, yeah, yeah. what's the sun? What's the Where is it? Where is information? I mean, as oh, you can see it here. Well, okay, okay. Yeah. Or we will post in the group only. Yeah. Going to end this session now. All of you can leave now. I will Thanks. share this in the uh, share this in the group as well. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So what you did is uh, about that information yes, you will share it on group, right? Uh, sorry. About that forms information, I just uh, asked you, na. Oh uh, yes, yes. Example. I will share that uh, in the group as well. Oh, okay, sir. Don't Thank worry you. Okay, one of the students has already shared the poster. You can see that there. And solve as uh, all the problems that I am going to uh, give you. Okay. Thank you. All of you can leave now.